guys, welcome back to my channel. So you guys probably all know by now how I feel about chain pedestals. So when I was a kid, one of my favourite things that I used to love to do when I wasn't allowed a certain pet is go into the pet store and collect the little leaflets they had about that animal and I would read these and look at the pictures and I would just collect these and I've not done that in a while. I've not looked in their care guides probably in about four or five years so I wanted to go in, have a look at one of their care guides and give you guys my honest opinion of what is written inside. So I picked up this one from Pets at Home on rats and this definitely looks a lot different to the one I probably had on rats before not just in the pictures and everything but it does also say they've partnered with the RSPCA to write this leaflet so hopefully the standards in this should be better than they were before. So if I'm being honest my hopes for this containing useful or correct information isn't very high although I do hope that it does have the majority of the information in there is correct because unfortunately a lot of people this is where their research starts and this is where the research stops so hopefully everything in here is correct and isn't harmful to the rats that a lot of people are going to be buying because they've read this leaflet. So uh, there's quite a few more pages than I remember them having, maybe I'm wrong but um, there's definitely a lot of text in here, hopefully it's useful and correct text but we'll see. So the first bit says all pet owners have a legal responsibility to meet their pet's welfare needs which includes providing a suitable diet and environment, companionship and ensuring they are kept healthy and are able to form normal behaviours. If you're thinking about having rats as pets, learn as much as you can about how to care for them beforehand. So that part I like, you do need to do a lot of research before getting a pet and I am glad that they are promoting that. So the first section is rats as pets and it says rats can make good family pets and may be suitable for older children providing they are cared for properly. So yeah, I generally agree with that. I do think they can be good pets for smaller children because they are slightly larger than like hamsters and stuff. Obviously with parent supervision and as the parents as the sole owner. But yeah, I think they are very good family pets. Rats often sleep during the day and are most active at dawn, dusk and during the night. So they'll enjoy spending time with you in the evening. Rats live between two and three years. So that last part is true, but I would rather word it, rats live on average two to three years, so no one's expecting them to live two years, especially if they're getting them from a chain pet store. They might not live that long due to their genetics. So the next part, I'm really glad they've included this at the front of the leaflet, so people will read this first, and that is, we need company. Rats must be kept in same-sex pairs or groups as they're very sociable. Buy or rehome your rats as an established pair or group at the same time as they'll already be friends, although new rats can sometimes be carefully introduced later, your rats may enjoy your company too. Provide regular, calm and gentle contact with them to allow a bond to grow between you. So I do wish they had gone more in depth about why they need company as rats are social animals and they will become very depressed if they are housed alone. So I wish they had gone more into depth about why that is, to really drill into people that are buying rats about why it is so important. But yeah, I'm glad they included that bit in, it's just a shame that sometimes the stores themselves don't follow this through and they do end up selling rats and leaving one rat by itself. I wish these stores could sometimes follow the advice they're giving out in their leaflets. So the next section, where do we need to live? Rats need lots of exercise and stimulation and love to explore, so housing them in a large cage specifically designed for rats is important. Choose a large wire multi-level cage as this will provide lots of interest and allow your rats to use the bars for climbing. The cage should have a solid floor, not wire mesh, as wire floors can lead to foot problems. It should be safe and secure and must not allow your rats to escape. So this part is good, I'm glad they've included this, and again, this does sound very much like the RSPCA has written this part, particularly about the wire mesh floors. I'm glad they're not really behind on saying that rats can be kept in tanks because that is horrendous. I'm pretty sure Pets at Home does sell a cage that has a wire floor or wire shelves that a lot of people use for rats or chinchillas. I will have to check on the website whether they still sell this because if they do that is a massive shame but most of the information in here is really good information. So far I must say and I honestly didn't expect to say this but I am pleasantly surprised with this leaflet. I was expecting it to be a lot worse. So this part continues and it says the cage should have platforms at different levels and items such as tunnels, ropes, hammocks, ladders and shelters to encourage your rats to stretch up on their hind legs, 
occupied, climb and explore at different heights within the cage. So then there's a paragraph that is highlighted that says rats are extremely agile and can jump two feet or more. They can fall and injure themselves so make sure there are no interrupted heights within the cage or exercise area. So it's really good they put this bit in because this is something that can happen. Often people don't fill their cage out enough and add fall breakers like hammocks. And if you do have a really large cage, even though rats are very good at climbing, they can sometimes fall from the top. So I'm really glad they put this bit in because it is another important fact to consider. Cover the base of the cage with paper based or other suitable bedding material, such as non-aspen wood chips. I'm not entirely sure why they've said specifically non-aspen wood chips because aspen is a perfectly safe substrate to use with rats, so that bit does confuse me a little bit. Sawdust or wood shavings are not suitable as these can make rats ill. So I'm glad they've included this part because pets at home do sell sawdust bedding and that is very detrimental to rats health unless it is dust extracted and kiln dried but as far as I'm aware pets at home don't sell dust extracted kiln dried shavings so putting that bit in is important to make sure people know that and they don't buy the sawdust or wood shavings from the store. Rats enjoy choosing and manipulating materials to build their own nests. Provide your rats with a variety of suitable nesting materials such as good quality, just free hay shredded paper. I think there needs to be a comma there. And paper tissues to give them a choice over what they use to build their nests. So yeah, in terms of that housing section, I think it is pretty good. It does go into quite a lot of detail. It doesn't necessarily say what the minimum size cage is for rats, which is a bit disappointing. But other than that, there is a lot of information there that I wasn't expecting. Moving on to the food section, what do we eat? Rats are omnivores, they eat both plants and animal matter, so you will need to provide your pets with a balanced and varied diet. Whilst in our care, we feed our rats pets at home rat nuggets, which contains all the nutrients they need. Nuggets prevent selective feeding, a common problem associated with muesli-based rat diets. Okay, so we have a lot of things to unpack in this section. The first one is the pets at home rat nuggets. These have been found to not be the best quality rat food on the market. Obviously pets at home are going to push their own foods, that's just how things work, but a lot of people have allegedly found that feeding rats on this food for their whole lifespan has made them more likely to develop cancer later on in life, so as a general rule a lot of people do avoid this food and do not recommend it as a staple food to feed your rats at all. This is thought to be due to the protein sources used in the food, apparently it's not the best quality and that does lead to the development of cancer. Allegedly, I'm just throwing that allegedly in there, but obviously pets at home are going to recommend their own food. I do recommend that you do your own research into what you think is the best food to feed your rats. I do have a whole video on rat diet, I'll leave it in the iCards and in the description, but yeah, I know they're going to put their own food in the feeding section but a lot of people do advise against using that specific brand. It goes on to talk more about selective feeding and muesli, and says this is when your pet eats the bits they like and leave the rest. This can result in nutrients deficiencies, weight gain and other health problems. Now this is a common thing that you will hear with hamsters, with mice, with rats. You shouldn't feed them a muesli based diet because of selective feeding. This can also be a problem if you're overfeeding and trying to feed your rats or your hamsters and your mice every single day on a muesli diet, they are going to be selective and pick out their favourite bits, but the important thing to do when feeding them on a muesli is make sure they've eaten every single bit of that food before offering them any more, and this does prevent selective feeding. So if you're feeding your rats with a high quality muesli diet that has all the right ingredients and is nutritionally balanced, and making sure your rats aren't selectively feeding, and you make feeding time interesting for them, then you shouldn't have any problems with selective feeding, and sometimes making your own mix or using a high quality muesli is a better option over these nuggets that are supposed to have everything your rat is supposed to have nutritionally. Sometimes they end up not having everything in them, and this then can actually lead to health issues. We recommend that you continue to feed your rats pets at home rat nuggets to help prevent digestive upsets caused by a sudden change of food. Of course they're going to suggest that. If you do wish to change your rat's diet, introduce new food slowly over a period of about 10 days. Use a ceramic food bowl, they're knob proof, hard to knock over and easily cleaned or you could scatter food around the cage so they can enjoy foraging. So I'm really glad they included that part about scatter feeding, I really wasn't expecting that to be in there so that's good. Rats tend to drink more water than other rodents so several large water bottles are essential. Provide fresh water daily and check their supply twice a day. So alongside that I would probably also add that you can 
Also provide them with a water bowl as an alternative. So the next section is what do we like to do? Stimulating natural behaviour by providing opportunities for your rats to chew, hide, climb, explore, dig and forage will keep your pets entertained. Toys are great fun as well as tunnels, ropes and hammocks. Try hiding their food in toys or cardboard tubes to stimulate natural foraging behaviour too and provide treats in moderation which can be opened e.g. monkey nuts. Make sure that any toys purchased are saved for your pets. So that part is really good, it's encouraging enrichment and getting your rats to forage for their food. The only thing it doesn't mention is buying specific foraging toys, which as far as I know I don't think pets at home sell them, at least in the small animal section, they probably have a few, but that's the only thing I probably would add into that section. A secure playpen filled with wooden or cardboard tubes, tunnels, boxes and chew toys can be used to provide exercise outside of the cage in the evening. So in that part they've not mentioned that you can just free roam your rats without a pen, um, a lot of people are hesitant to do this because they're scared they're going to lose your rats so doing this in a secure room is really important but they could have added that in there as well and they could have added how important it is to get your rats out and free roam them and interact with them on a daily basis for at least an hour or two a day so I would have added that in as well. Rats enjoy digging so provide an area where they can dig within their playpen e.g. a box filled with clean play sand or suitable soil mixture e.g. tortoise substrate Rats must be closely supervised at all times whilst in a playpen. So I'm really shocked that they basically suggested giving your rats a dig box. Dig boxes are pretty much one of the best sources of enrichment. You can give your rats to express their natural behaviour so the fact that it's in here has shocked me to the core but I'm glad it's in there because this is giving people that are reading this leaflet plenty of ideas to give the rats enrichment so well done for including that. Personally I'm not too sure about using play sand, I would just go for the soil instead but props to them for putting that in. So the next part is another bold section and it says if you provide a wheel make sure it's solid rather than with open rungs so your rats cannot get their feet or tails trapped. So it's a good thing they've put that in there, I think that is another common issue that a lot of people in the past have had with rats. They've bought wire wheels which aren't really suitable and the only thing I would add to this paragraph is what the minimum size wheel needs to be. A lot of people, and again, pets at home, do unfortunately sell wheels that are far too small for rats, and people fall for this and they buy them, and then they've wasted their money because they are too small. I would include in that section the appropriate size wheel for rats, which unfortunately I don't think pets at home stocks one big enough, so that's probably the reason that's not in there. <sighs> so, moving on, how to handle us. When you take your rats home, give them a day or two to settle in, and get used to the new surroundings without being disturbed. So then it just goes into detail on how to bond with your rats, getting them used to handling, letting them sniff you, offering them treats and waiting until they are naturally awake, which is good, and then it says, never pick your rats up by their tails or hold them at a height, it's best to sit down when handling your rats, children should be supervised closely by an adult when handling rats. So yeah, I'm glad they've included that bit in because if anyone's picking their rats up by their tails that is horrendous. Um, the holding them at height part, I do recommend this when they're small and they're not used to you. Obviously as they get more used to you, you can have them on your shoulder and just walk around. That is perfectly fine, rats have a really good perception of depth. So I would just ignore that part if your rats are fully bonded to you and used to you, you can just walk around with them on your shoulder. And then it has a section about health and it says they can be prone to a number of ailments, for example respiratory infections. Sometimes when you buy your rats from a pet store, they already come with a respiratory infection. A healthy rat is active and playful with a full shiny coat, bright eyes and a clean nose. Rats are susceptible to respiratory problems, look for persistent sneezing and you might also see red flecks on the noses, around their eyes and around the cage. That is not blood, but a pigment called porphyrin that is produced in times of stress. Sneezing, a dull, spiky coat, bald patches, dry or irritated skin, lethargy, changes in eating, drinking, or changes in behaviour, e.g. aggression, can also indicate that your pet might be unwell. So yeah, I'm glad that part is in there because respiratory infections are one of the biggest issues when it comes to rats, especially rats that are genetically a lot more prone to having respiratory infections, um, and that is something you do need to be aware of if you are a first time rat owner. It can be pretty overwhelming getting a rat and seeing all these symptoms and not knowing, so Hopefully this being in there is going to educate a lot of people that only use this as their only resource but that is an issue they need to keep an eye out for. It's also important to always provide wooden toys, blocks or mineral stones for gnawing on to help prevent overgrown teeth. So yes to all the wooden items, 
no to mineral stones. Mineral stones aren't really that useful to any small animal as far as I know, so you don't need to give them mineral stones. Wooden toys will do. Um, and then it says, if you're thinking of looking after rats, you've really researched their welfare needs and you're committed to taking care of them for their whole lives, please think about giving home to some of the many rescue rats available for adoption at our in-store, support adoption for pet centres which are in Pets at Home, and that does not count towards buying pet store rats, that does count towards the adoption charity itself, and RSPCA animal centres across England and Wales or other animal charities. So I'm really glad they have included that section in the leaflet because as you all know, I don't personally support the purchasing of rats from pet stores and from rodent mills and it's really good they've put that bit in as another option to people that don't know there is other options. You can go to rescue centres and even look in the support section to adopt rats instead of supporting chain pet stores and buying rats from there. You can also look at other places. Obviously breeders are an option but I don't think the RSPCA would put that in there. But obviously it's so good that they've already put that other option in there of adopting rats instead of purchasing them and contributing towards a much larger issue which I'm not going to go into. So then it does also have a blue section at the bottom which says the five welfare needs also known as the five freedoms. So these five welfare needs are somewhere suitable to live, a proper diet including water, the ability to express normal behaviour, to be housed with or apart from other animals so depending on if they're social or not, and protection from pain, suffering, injury and disease. So yeah, as glad as I am that that is on the back and that they're advising people to follow this, the only problem I have and the only thing I can say is that I wish the stores themselves would follow this and follow the care in this leaflet because half of the time I've witnessed them not necessarily doing that. That's not to say every store is bad and that every store doesn't care for the animals properly but I do wish they would have a higher minimum requirement for the cage sizes and the fact that the rats are essentially kept in tanks with very little enrichment and very little to do and obviously this is a much bigger problem that I'm not going to go into but I do wish sometimes that the stores would also stick to half of the advice in the leaflet. So I don't have much voice left after reading all of that but I would say in general I am pleasantly surprised. I think I was expecting a lot worse when it comes to the care information in a booklet from a pet store. I am pleasantly surprised. A lot of the things that stood out to me, I think mostly because they have partnered up with the RSPCA, is the recommendation for using a dig box and for pushing that they do need same age company. That's also really important. Um, also the fact that they do encourage you to provide them with plenty of enrichment and foraging them and scatter feeding. I was not expecting to find that kind of information in just a basic care guide, so I am pleasantly surprised. Obviously if you are thinking of getting rats, please don't just rely on this leaflet. They do say to go away and do plenty more research, which I'm really grateful they've added that in because rats are not an easy pet. A lot of people probably think they are, and a lot of people that do go into pet stores probably don't unfortunately do their research and do just rely on leaflets like this, but you do need to go and do further research to properly care for your rats. But yeah, that is it for today's video. I just wanted to react to the information in this care guide because it's been a while since I read one, but I am pleasantly surprised. I'm not overly impressed with it, but I would say that some of the information in there is definitely good information to follow. So make sure you do your research, please, please, please. Do not get rats on an impulse. Make sure you do your research first. Also make sure you are subscribed to see any more animal content for me and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.